my name is Brian Laker. I've been with SME now for about 20 years, almost to the day. I'm now the sales and service manager here. And it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. And this is the uh, least affordable, but best, Model 30. I was just working in here, um, thoroughly checking, obviously, not only our own uh, SME parts, mm -hmm. but the contract parts as well, using various precision measuring equipment. It's all about precision. I knew there'd be a watch. Yeah. <laughs> um, accurate measuring devices we have, uh, measured down to microns. Goodness gracious. And they're all running on air bearings. Wow. That is impressive. I so bet those can, are not inexpensive. They're not inexpensive at all, are they? They're <laughs> very, very uh, sought after machines. And in this country, they're not used very, very much, apart from the um, perhaps people like the motor racing industry or something like that, where they need very high precision. I've got over there. Okay. The battery's gone. And I can. So do you stock the extra ones here, or we? Well, what they do is they manufacture on, on this floor for us the, the items that we require. Um, they then get passed on to the various departments that, that feed us in the assembly area. Okay. Um, that would be the electroplating department and the spraying department. Um, you know, once they come off the machines, there's still quite a lot of work to be done in deburring, mm -hmm. um, anodizing, chrome plating, and spraying. Yes. So. Um, Although they may be machined in batches of 100, they may be only finished in batches of uh, 15 to 20. So this might be the department that does the computer control milling? Yeah. Okay. Deburring. Results of deburring. That's sort of the, uh, just a small bit comes out of the uh, basis of the team, really. Uh, and we've got the phase of bottom question. These two machines are is the older one of the two. Uh, they were made by Citizen Company, uh, which is actually a watch company. Um, so they were actually designed their own machines to make fine components for their own watches and then make them available to other engineering places. Um, they, you can see them around the world, they don't always carry the Citizen bag on them, they're part of sold for the day of bag. Are they German or Swiss? Or? Uh, German, I think. Uh, they're a fully automatic machine. These mm. units are the same job on both machines. They're what we call bar feed. And you can load these units up here with all these individual bars. When the machine needs more material, this will actually open on its own, feed itself another bar, and then it gradually feeds it into the, the collet of the machine. So this takes raw stock and mills it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, we can actually fill this cassette up with uh, about 20 bars, I suppose, and they can leave that to run overnight. Even. Wow. Uh, the other one's got a slightly smaller stock, um, but it's, it's all encased. So. Okay. Well, then, you see the machining going on down in there. The job arrives from the right hand side of the machine, where you can see it being machined at the moment. The machine will do some work there, complete part of its job, and then it will part it off from the bar and actually take the component over to the left hand side of the machine. And it's capable of actually working on two components at the same time. Incredible. So it can finish the front end of the component and the 
and go and finish it back in the component before it finally finishes the part. So would you say that 100% of what y'all do is, well, most, nearly 100% is mechanical? Yes. Okay. All of these, these two machines have really been bought in to handle relatively small components up to perhaps 20-25 uh, millimeters in diameter at the most. Wow. So that's all they're manufacturing. Any part of the turntables made in these? Um, small um, nuts and bolts and things like that. Okay. Perhaps, but, but, uh, but for the tone arms, yes. Lots, lots of tone arms are made in here. So the uh, main shaft of the tone arm? The main shaft of the tone arm is a cast, is a cast piece, okay. which, which uh, we don't actually cast here. We, we, we receive it as a raw cast and then we do bow it and finish it. So, so you need to finish it? Yeah. Okay. So the job is to, to plate under the retaining bolt. It's part of a um, uh, pressure steam plate. Uh, medical pressure fitting for uh, seeing uh, hospital cleaning uh, wow. equipment in hospital. Okay. They could have used y'all on the Manhattan Project back yeah. in the war. Yeah. So the reason the machine gets so wet and dirty is that the head swivels over and you get the coolant coming out this way, which is why the whole of the machine gets drenched in coolant later on in the program. They should do a broadcast video on, uh, on this, it would be fascinating. If you don't get your hands cut, I'm sure. You have to be a little bit careful, but uh, pull some of it out of the way, you know. Are any of the turntable parts produced? When well, we produce our platters and uh, the circular chassis for the Model 10 will be produced on these machines. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Well, we us on a day when we're not doing very much. Yes, yeah, quite. Yeah. problem. So my turntable was made on this machine, that's true. It should have been made on this one, or I think that one runs some turntable parts just recently, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. 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 How many turntables a year do you all generally make? Uh, it varies on the model, really. Between uh, the Model 30, it would have been probably in the 10s, and the Model, model 20s and the 10s would be in the 100s. Yeah. Each one is uh, like a precision yeah. race car, though. in the moment. It's the part that goes on the underside of the bearing of the turntable. Oh. And holds the bearing, holds the bearing together. Bronze? That's brass. Brass. Okay. Very, very interesting. Is this uh, tolerance we're looking at? It's an air gauge, yeah. It's an air gauge. Fascinating. 